Aloha, you too. This your boy, Crypto Roots. And we back at it again with Mo Crypto Game. But today it's a little different. Today we're doing an interview with the young, upcoming crypto YouTuber who's, who's a brother, who's an intelligent brother and knows about the crypto space. I found out his channel. I'm like, yo, I need to introduce my audience to this uh, brother right here. And um, his YouTube channel goes by the name of Everything Currency. I like that. It kind of kind of caught my eye. His channels, uh, just from what I've known, it just talks about the DeFi space. And uh, would you like to introduce yourself, brother? What's your name? What do you go by? Yo, my name is Jay. My name is Jay from Everything Currency. That's the channel. Uh, real name is Jarvis, but you can call me Jay. You know what I mean? Do your thing. That's what's up. So, uh, when did you start your your YouTube channel? So I started my YouTube channel back all the way back in. The early about mid 2017. Word, word. That, yeah. Okay, yeah, I started around 2017 too. Oh, nice, nice. Uh, I got in right before that big bull run. That's what, uh, right before it. So, um, yeah, I started my channel before I really started buying a lot of crypto. You know what I mean? Dope, dope. And so, why'd you name it Everything Currency? Um, I named it Everything Currency because when I first started the YouTube channel, I wanted it to have like a broad reaching spectrum. Like, you know, I wanted to help people with all of finance, not just, you know, just currency in general. You know, um, I know a lot of people was hurting. I originally started off wanting to do like just mindset videos about currency. I know people had a terrible mindset when it comes to currency. I learned about crypto um, and it just became crypt mostly crypto from there. But the name, everything currency, just I kept it broad so I could talk about everything from getting your credit right to stacking up with this crypto, so. That's dope, yeah, that's dope. And yeah, like I was telling you earlier, earlier I kind of started the opposite way, uh, but I, I, I was doing stocks right before I found out about crypto, so it actually really helped me transition. But as soon as I found out crypto, I was just like, fuck everything else, I'm only gonna do crypto. And that's when I actually realized crypto actually involved everything else everything else were related to crypto and crypto related to everything else. So that's why I realized like you could, you, I couldn't just be so locked in, but I had to like, you know, some, I had to find a way to like brand myself. So I was like, you gotta just stick crypto with me. Um, but that's dope. Cause you know, we both yeah. got our channels and we both and everything. Um, yeah, it does actually involve being with cryptocurrency, uh, such as computer science, such as uh, even thermodynamics when it comes to mining and heat, so it goes really deep. Uh, yeah, it's just, I think that's one of the main things about crypto is people underestimate what it actually is. People just say, oh, Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin is going to be, you know, it's not, it's not going to be a currency. And I'm just like, well, if you count Bitcoin now, you got AI, you got energy, you got, you know, supply chain. Yeah, like, exactly. all, yeah you know, there's all type of, I think crypto just gets a, you can't really put it into one little bubble, actually. It just spreads out across everything. Well, I, like, I'm glad you mentioned that because at this point in the game, if someone says, like, crypto's a scam, crypto's done, crypto's, they're, what they're really telling me is I don't understand money. I don't understand anything about the U.S. dollar. So I see no value in anything other than the U.S. Like, they're just telling me how ignorant they are. And I'm not here to make them feel ignorant. Like, that's not my job. But when I mention crypto and people are just like, sounds like a scam. Sounds like it's like, uh, the, I, at the back of my mind, you know, the U.S. dollar is the biggest scam out there right now. Like, you know, it's. The main question that I would ask people is like, do you even know what a scam is? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, exactly. You know what I mean? So, um. Now, um, you, your videos have been focused on DeFi lately, and you know, so have mine. And what do you like about the DeFi space the most? What are some of the top things that you actually like? Because it's, it's like 2017 kind of vibes again. You feel me? When it yeah. comes to the crypto, it's that excitement, it's that money, it's the up and the down. So what do you like? Aurea, yeah. Games. What do you, so yeah, tell me about your DeFi experience and what caught you, you know, what do you like about it? Um, well, like I said, my channel, I wanted to mainly base it upon just, you know, currency and, you know, collecting currency, getting money and everything. And 
I think I saw like a lot of a lot of other people that DeFi is where the money's at. You know, like I'll be quick to tell you that I'm not just solely just you know I I like projects that are not decentralized as well. You know, I think if you're thinking that decentralized is the only way to go, I think you still don't really know a lot about business. But um, I think just for right now, looking at the crypto space as a whole and how the majority of it is, the products are not ready yet. So it's based on the speculation of these projects getting ready. And just DeFi had the most of that. You know, it had the best use case as of right now that as far as what people could see, you know, and, and plus, you know, the first the first goal of crypto was to try to try to impact the banking. And that's what DeFi is doing. So that's why a lot of my stuff have been focused on DeFi lately, because not only that's where the gains are, and it looks like that's where the, where the most future is right now, as far as um, crypto goes. Absolutely, absolutely. And when it comes to centralization versus decentralization, and I'm, I'm pro, like I, I push it, decentralization, decentralization. But until you actually start your own crypto business, until you actually, you realize like how things need to be centralized at first, like at first they have to, how else is it going to be built? Satoshi had to be the central authority at first. Like, you know, right. like the decisions had to be made of what to do and how to do it in order for it. But compound finance is one of the best examples of how you can start centralized and slowly migrate and migrate to true decentralization, DAO governance, and the owner still be involved, not get jealous, not like, but still, be, uh, uh, they aided along the way from centralization to decentralization. It's a process. And that's yeah, it's a process. Yeah, a lot of people who haven't started their own businesses or anything like that, they don't actually understand that decisions need to be made and they somebody is going to have to make those decisions and yeah. what happens is and i've kind of felt this is that once you get a certain amount of power especially since you're the one making the decisions or you're part of the group then a lot of people just really the problem is they don't want to give that up they don't want yeah. to give up that power so what they'll do is they'll, they'll mask it as a cryptocurrency like a, a tether They'll they'll, yeah. they'll 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 try to like Libra. Well, we're a cryptocurrency, right? They right. Still pull we're just in lies, like <laughs> right. They still pull this. So I don't like that. Now you fucking with people. Yeah. Now you got the the common consumer thinking this shit is something else when it's really not something else, right. and it's fucking right. up the game for everything else, right? So yeah, that was the problem with uh Bitcoin Cash in the beginning is uh, you know what I mean? But they were. Yeah, I, and so I like the, I, I, and so like I tell, it's the first time you get to shop around for your own jurisdiction. If you don't yeah. like the way this monetary, this community, its monetary policy, how often it mines block, if you don't agree with it, then you got two options. You can bounce and leave and use another form of currency, right? Or you can fork it, copy that shit, and just change a few things and start your own. Right. And that's what I love about it, is that uh, my, the best example is the Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. You know, right? I fucked with both of them, like I do. Me too. Me too. Because, yeah. but clearly, Ethereum's leading the way. Clearly, it's leading the way. But See, that's where. Go ahead. Oh, my bad. No, 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 no. no. What, I'm just like with Ethereum. Like with Ethereum, that's where people kind of get mistaken too. They're like, everyone's saying, "Oh, ETH 2.0. When's it coming? When's it coming?" You know, it's just. It's decentralized, man. It might take some time. You know, all those decisions have to be made in a decentralized way. They all have to be voted on. They all have to be tested and all that. And yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. So that's one of the ways you can actually change Bitcoin. And that's what Satoshi wrote. It's called overwhelming consensus. The only way to change this is the everybody, the generally most of everybody needs to agree to update the software. That's the only way you can actually change the code by having right. overwhelming so you do that, they have VIPs and EIPs with uh, uh, Bitcoin improvement proposals and Ethereum improvement proposals. But Ethereum changed it to Ethereum request for comments. That's ERC-20. So mm -hmm. Ethereum request for comments. And then Bitcoin has Bitcoin. So you, like Compound, you make a proposal and then you have people vote on it and whatnot. That's how you actually get to change things in the decentralized way. But yeah. it's easier to change things in centralization because all you have to do is call up homeboy at the top and be like, yes or no. And homeboy just has to say yes or no. 
Jeff Bezos, fucking whoever's at the top. And that's right. central yeah. states, yeah, centralized structures can change more more quickly. Decentralized people are the thing about decentralized uh, the ecosystem is that people are really egotistical. No, even though that sounds good, like a good upgrade, fuck it. I'm gonna vote down because I didn't come up with it. You know, like I, um, you know it's gonna it's not going to impact my bags the right way. Yeah, so yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Everybody's got an opinion and no one's just going to be like, yeah, thumbs up. No, that's not. So the, the decentralized networks are slower to actually make. And that's why Lightning Network hasn't really fully just come in the game. Is because people are like, yeah. nah, fuck that shit. We're, we're voting it down. And so uh, when things actually do actually change in the community, that shows that the community really wanted it. And that's the beautiful part is that the community really yeah. wanted this change. I mean, people didn't realize like decentralized finance. I think definitely there's there's a, a big gold mine there, but people don't realize like even EOS when they first came through with their delegated proof of stake, um, they had a bunch of issues because they needed people to vote and nobody voted. You know, nobody cared to even participate in the whole decentralized part of the of the system. You know, and that kind of mess up everything and if the users are not actually going to go out there put their tokens up stake them vote then you might have problems you know it's going to be centralized anyway in, in a different type of way so listen check this out you just sparked something voting is the new money and decentralized yeah. networks voting mm -hmm. is the new look at compound and look at wi-fi being able to liquidity mine for the governance token then you're able to actually vote on a current. So it's like voting is the new money and you're being compensated with that governance token, which is a form of money and actually able to vote and affect the system. And I'm glad you brought that up because I didn't necessarily realize that is that right now voting is the new money and you need the, to even get the token that is worth money to vote. It's crazy. That's some news. Yeah. Yeah, like for me, it's just like, you know, like if, if, any of these decentralized protocols, which a bunch of them will probably be used in the future to, to manage billions and billions of dollars, you know, um, right now you might, how many times have you thought, man, the bank has all the money. If I own the bank, I'll be good. You know what I mean? Well, here's your chance. You, you get, you buy these governance tokens. And if this, so say die becomes the, the next big bank, you know what I mean? If you own maker, then you have a say in the governance of what happens with DAI. So therefore you have a say in what happens with the bank. You know what I'm saying? And I'm glad, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. And that's important. And I'm, I'm considering getting some maker. And the reason I'm considering is because uh, it, it hit over a billion dollars in the vaults. Uh, I mean, as far as maker, right? So what we're seeing yeah. is you're actually, what only maker is like being part of the Federal Reserve. If I were to explain it to somebody who's not part of crypto, I'm like, it's your, it's your seat at the table of the Federal Reserve because now we right. have centralized dollars. So now you are part, you're incentivized because if Maker fucks up, they take the cost. If they're not able to balance the peg right, that comes out of Maker's cost. The people who hold the token, they take the loss. So they're incentivized to govern the token well enough so that it, it doesn't ever really fall off the peg too far. So that, so that's what I, it's like being part, like having a table at the Federal Reserve. If I were to explain it to somebody who's new to all this and it's like, yeah, that governance token, especially if your money, me, I like compound. And what I like about compound is like, I like the fact that we can choose to raise rates. We can choose to uh -huh. lower fed, uh, reserve factors. Like, and that affects your money, man. And you know, I just, yeah. I, just I love it. I, I, this whole governance token, liquidity mining, yield farming, uh, yeah, it's exciting. Yep. It's the exciting. whole whole device is just, like it's it's pretty exciting. Just when you get in and you start seeing like like for me right now, I'm just like man, there's so many ways to make money in this thing. Like you know, and, and get excited about coming up. You say man, there's do I want to liquidity mine? Do I want to yield farm? Do I want to trade? Do I want to buy and hold? Do I want to stake? Like, you know what I'm saying? I could just stake the 32 ETH. I could stake the 32 ETH and sit on that for the rest of my life and collect fucking fees, bro. Like, and so here's the thing, though. And I, I, I want to mention this because right now the world is going through a, 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 a time like we've never seen before, historically. Like, this is some crazy shit, right? Uh, There's a lot going on. The economy's collapsing. Uh, rent, renters and landlords. Shit's, shit's crazy, right? Yeah. 
the media and even social media more particularly would have our mind focusing in on so much negative Biden, Trump, yeah. Jeffrey Einstein, like, and, 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 and you got, it's like you're in tunnel vision of thinking the world is going bad, riots, racism, all this shit. But if you look at the other side, which is a small little group of people, they're excited, man. Yes. These people are staying up all night, waking up early, you know, and we're yes. like, wow, like we see so much potential. And it's like, yeah, yeah. it's almost hard to pay attention to all the negativity, even though it's real and it, it's, it's, you know, it's real. Right. But this is even more realer because this is that small little hope. This is that yeah. small light in the tunnel of that darkness is decentralization, a way out, a way to like, you know, defund the banks, you know, like just a way out. And now that we see yeah. and are involved in it, it's exciting. And it's, I kind of just choose to focus more on this DeFi shit than, than the protest and, and the racism. Exactly. And, too. And you know, and I, and I get, sh you know, being, being black, you know, you get shit for it because they be like, man, you ain't been out there in protest. You ain't been out there. You know, for me, I'm just like, look, man, I was, I was out there protesting when, when Trayvon Martin got killed. That was years ago. You know what I mean? So looking at, and, and we were out there, what's a protest? You know what I mean? You're asking for them to change something. Now, if we went decentralized, we wouldn't have to ask for shit. There would be no asking. What we think is wrong, what we think is right would instantly happen. We wouldn't have to go to, to Capitol building and say, Mr. Trump, you know, arrest those people. Nah, if we own the shit, you get arrested. You kill somebody, you get arrested. You know yeah. what I mean? No, all bullshit aside. Yeah. You know, ain't none of this. Oh, maybe they were scared for their lives. Maybe. No, 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 no. You kill somebody who's not supposed to be killed, you got to go to trial. That's the way it should be. Yeah. Every citizen feels that way. Until and we get it, like, decentralized. Like, I was just actually talking to my boy about this yesterday. Imagine if, like, right now, the, the elections in the U.S. is coming up, right? Yeah. Now, imagine if they put the election on the blockchain. So that we can literally see and make sure that these people are vote. Like, if I vote, if I vote for whoever the fuck I vote for, you'll know that that vote came from that person. Because we have problems with voter fraud. You can do that with with, uh, with the blockchain. You I know mean, what I mean? There's so many. And there's states out here that already started, you know? Uh, uh, coin, you, you, there's a channel called Coin Bureau. I don't know if you subscribe to Coin Bureau. He just released a video yesterday talking about the future of uh, 2050 in the just as as if we're in the year of 2050 from the year two, he made a video from the year 2020 to the year 2050 how did cryptocurrency come into full effect around the world and he just literally broke it down event by social event by social event by government event how the, how we just slowly transition to a full decentralized so check out that video I'll leave it uh, link in the description but um, yeah. in, in my opinion, you got order followers. Some call them soldiers. Some call them cops. I call them order followers. What is motivating yeah. them to follow the orders, to pull the trigger, to right. kill people, to be out there? Like, and honestly, really, if you weren't compensating these people, they would find no real motivation because it's not worth it risking their lives to, to, for not, to not get paid, right? They're, they're in it to get paid, they're, right? They're in it to get paid. Think about it. So if you yeah. crash this their system and their dollar is not worth anything, their pensions are all gone, they can't even feed their families, you really think they're going to be out there trying to, like, police? No, they're going to be like, they're going to go towards it. The system will crumble from, you know, from within. And I just don't believe people are going to risk and sacrifice their lives to kill a bunch of people if there wasn't, if they really weren't being paid. And I'm not, there's some crazy cops who just are crazy cops, but most of the yeah. cops will be like, uh, nah, we're not getting, this is not enough. You know, it's, it's happening. You know, like, like soldiers, like, you know, the soldiers who got to come out, like when there's, you know, when the National Guard has to come down and go into a neighborhood because they're acting crazy. Like if they were not getting compensated, if they weren't, if they didn't have to, basically go to work and feed their family, they wouldn't do it. And it's it happened in Venezuela. The, the, the soldiers are rewarded once a month with toilet paper. With toilet paper. That's their reward. There's pictures of this shit. That is their reward. So this, it, it's happened in Al, Algeria. I'll, 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 I'll get the country. 
what happens is when you crash the currency to a certain point, it's happened already many times, the people with the guns do two things. This it ultimately comes down to this. They either drop the guns because their whole family's starving, including them, or they turn the guns around at the people who they were protecting that put them in this position. That's happened time and time again. So people either drop the guns, it's not worth it, or they turn the, turn the around at the people who caused everything on this. And so it, is, it will be a crazy movie to see this all play out. And yeah. um, I just don't necessarily think that like, money is just money. It can be used for bad things. You can you still do illegal things with Monero, you know? So it's all about the mindset. This is just new technology, it's just a tool. And these tools and technologies can be used for good and bad reasons. You can hack, you can yep. hack Ave, you can hack, you know, I mean, you could just go and start stealing everybody's accounts and, you know, SMMS, mm -hmm. you know, Gmail hacking. So there's still plenty of room for nefarious scams and artists. So that ha that's not gonna change about human nature. And that's why I feel education is so important is that, yeah. you know, yes, we own our private keys, but there's many things that can happen along the way of, you know, you know, so uh, with that being yeah, said. If you, if you, honestly, it's, it's one of those things like people talk about, uh, actually, I wanted to talk about some, when you mentioned that uh, about still do illegal things, you know, Elon Musk had the best argument for Bitcoin. He said, hey, look, if it's used for illegal, activities it has to be used for legal activities first right okay. like if everybody knew that it was just used for something bad then nobody would take it right it had to be used exactly. it had to be worth something before it was before it was used for illegal activity you know what i mean and so and, that yeah and you got to understand criminals value their privacy more than the average individual why because they got a lot more to lose so anything criminals are taking using to protect their privacy is usually some of the latest technology out there you know so you kind of yeah. have to pay attention you know not that you know you should do whatever they're doing but like they're pretty on top of it when it comes to this dark web shit it's like yo how, how tour so they got to go to tour you got to go to here you got to do this and it's like yo, you learn about networking you learn you become like a computer scientist just learning about this crypto shit you know i actually have a story to tell you about that so one of my boys actually got rich not rich but he ended up coming up like you know a good changed his life put it that way because he wanted to you know he wanted to buy him a little bit of weed he couldn't find nobody to buy some weed from and this is when bitcoin was pennies yeah you know what i mean he wanted to buy some weed and he the only way he can get it was on the dark web he was in, and he was young i think he was like 16 17 and this dude when bought him some Bitcoin and, and figured out how to do it. Fast forward to 2017, going through a bunch of shit at home in Baltimore, you know what I mean? Life is flipping upside down, opens up his Bitcoin account and finds out that he got like $47,000 just sitting there waiting for him. Comes out to California, changes his whole life, becomes a producer, doing great. All from, you know, <laughs> early Bitcoin dabbling. Yeah, I did want to do a series. I did want to do a series called uh, "Got What I Wanted," but like Bitcoin, uh, uh, Bitcoin stories or Bitcoin good luck stories or something like that. Because I've heard that a few times where people were they got into Bitcoin, shit went crazy, their life went crazy, shit was bad, and all of a sudden they were able to buy a car that changed their life because Bitcoin. You know, they were able to get back into their wallet, and so I enjoy that. I I enjoy that. This is that it it's some i wouldn't say it's so spiritual but if you do believe in it somehow it'll look out for you you know what i'm saying so oh, yeah, yeah. look out for you one way or another whether me particularly it was the education it was yeah. the education i didn't realize how much i knew because i was living on maui up in the jungle on an island and farming mm -hmm. and but i was studying crypto on my laptop and then it just so happens, I go out to LA, I meet a quote unquote celebrity, da 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 da. And um, he ended up scamming me out of a, a lot of money. And then um, I ended up telling the truth online to his audience, and his audience just freaked out and they kind of started following and paying attention. So somehow it's crazy, but I, I was able to use his platform to level up, you know? Yeah. And now I didn't, ex and so it kind of, and I didn't realize how much education until he put me on his platform and I started spitting crypto game and everybody was just like, what the, and I didn't, I didn't realize, yo, people don't even know about this shit. Let me like, yeah. you know, so 
that was crazy. That's the crazy part. Go ahead. So I had I had a question for you. I wanted to get uh, going on. It was so I like to direct a lot of my uh, videos and stuff towards people who are like just getting in because I'm sure like you know you say you started your channel in 2017. Yeah. And I know if you're like me. If you would have known what you knew today, on the day that you started in 2017, you'd probably be in a whole. You know. Absolutely. Even though we. Even though we both leveled up since then, it'll probably be like double that, Absolutely. you know. So, um, what's one piece of advice you would give somebody who's just thinking about getting in? Because I got a lot of people who are, you know, they kind of know what I do. They heard about it. They know what Bitcoin is, but they're a little hesitant. They don't really know what's going on. Like, what would be your first advice for somebody getting like fresh? Fresh, immediately, ad- immediately invest in Ethereum. Set up your MetaMask, invest in Ethereum, and put Good. that Ethereum into Compound Finance. Just that, just that alone, I think is, is what you immediately should do. And from there, liquidity pools and staking. Why do I say that? Why would I just mm-hmm. encourage, even before you, yes, learn about private keys, but nothing feels better to me personally, knowing that I'm making passive income. Okay, so that's one. Yeah. Nothing feels I agree. To actually see vi- visually that I'm making the passive income like I do on compound, right? Knowing that's that, the best part. Yeah, knowing that it has a uh, variable rate, that the interest rate can go up and go down makes me feel better because I always feel like it, it can always go up. Not only are yeah. you, not only can the interest rate go up, you're liquidity mining at the same time, you're mining the governance token, which is another currency. So that's four pluses. Not just that, the market evaluation of Ethereum can go up exponentially. That's number five. And not only that, it compounds the interest. So you're looking at a form of investing that is very low risk free. Yes, there's a smart contract risk. Yes, there's uh, Ethereum can go down in value. But to roll the dice on uh, just that easy investment strategy, you're you, you could sleep better every day knowing that the interest is compounding and that Ethereum is getting more valuable, that you're creating a governance token and that the interest rate uh, could potentially go up even more and even more. So you, to me, it's unlimited potential without having to do much extra work, maybe $100 of Ethereum a month. That will be immediately. And the reason I could go into very philosophical, very educational, nothing speaks louder to the human mind and to the personality than the money. Where is the money? I like to give people information that they can apply in real time. Not something mm-hmm. you can just sit and think about like stars and suns and moons. No, you immediately <laughs> I agree. download this, you immediately write down your private keys, you immediately sign up for Coinbase or Uphold or Cash Out, you, this, you send it to this wallet, you invest it in the smart contract, you get your, your, like, do all that, and then we'll talk about how many blocks are mine and how many transactions and bytes and solidity a source code with the JavaScript, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want, yeah. I want to see people seeing themselves making the money and realize, yo, I'm in a different position now than I was before I talked to crypto groups. I'm, in yeah. a whole, I'm damn near a whole different person when I do these mentorships. It's like, yeah, yeah, you know, so I go hard because I, I, I like to see others come up. I enjoy that. It makes me Same. feel better to see other people prosper. My Same. The mentee, he scammed me and he scams all his mentees. And it made me realize how evil of a person who can try to pretend there to be people. And when it, when it comes down to it, he stabbed me in the back. So yeah. when it comes down to me making music, when, me, when it comes down to me, in my business, I'm gonna do everything I can not to stab someone in the back because I know how fucking bad that hurts. You know? Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. and my mind stayed on uh, value. What is more valuable, the experience or the mo- or the money? Some people sell their souls for money, and I I value the experience while making money. You know? Yeah. And seeing others make money because it's this yeah. so much of it out there, you know? Um, Teaching people how to fish and watching them eat. So. If you don't mind sharing with us as much as you're comfortable sharing, you know, like I admit that, yeah, I got scammed out of a, a lot of money, but I'm working on the lawsuit and everything. And, I, and, I, and that's one thing about crypto versus the traditional legal system is that sometimes you're able to like 
get some sort of legal justice, right? But when it comes to crypto, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. Soon as yeah. you get, soon as you send the money, it's a wrap. Soon as you get scammed or in a Ponzi scheme or BitConnect, it's a wrap. You can't go to nobody. Yeah. So I do feel yeah. a little better that yeah, maybe I can send this person to prison because it's straight up fraud. But if I made that kind of bad investment in crypto, there's there's seriously no one to feel sorry for me, nowhere to go. So my question to you was, what was one of the biggest losses you took? How, not necessarily how much was it, whatever you and how did it affect you? What did you do wrong? What did you do to get back on your feet? And how can what advice would you give someone who who to prevent that from have, taking a loss and to just someone who's like, yo, I just took the loss and to someone who's just getting back on their feet? How, how walk us through that process and if you don't mind sharing with us. Um I got I got two for you. I, I want to get into real quick. The first one is I, I was in BitConnect, you know, I was, okay. I had my, I, I put my money in BitConnect and thinking that, you know, yeah, this is, you know, within two years with $200, you can, you can make, you know, a hundred racks or 200 racks or whatever. That was the big selling point for BitConnect back then. So when I first got in and not really knowing a lot about finance and stuff like this, I was like, oh, this is great. Within two years, I'm going to have 200000 from $200, you know, then I started getting greedy. You know, I started saying, oh, man, why would I wait two years when I could start off with 2000 in there and it only take me six months, you know, and, and stuff like that. So um, with that, of course, beware of Ponzi's, you know, and you can't really tell if it's a Ponzi. But the the main advice that I would give towards that is just don't like everyone says it, but it's like nobody really. Some people don't follow it. I have friends who don't follow it is don't invest more than you can afford to lose. You know, because I started throwing too much money in there saying, oh, you know, when I first got it, oh, yeah, I'm about to throw ha half of my paycheck. You know, I was working a nine to five, I throw half of my paycheck, you know, and stuff like that. And and it was just at the end of the day, um, my big connect started getting into profit and I wasn't taking no money out. I wasn't taking no profit out. I was just, you know, getting greedy. So I would say definitely uh, don't get greedy. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. And And, you know, although this is a huge opportunity always realize the risk you know what i mean like there's there's always risk involved um you know be ready to to pull your money out if you have to which brings me to my second one which i'm sure a lot of people who were in, who got in crypto around the same time i did which i just held through the bell the bear market <laughs> you know i watched my bags go up and up 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 and, and we hit twenty thousand. and after my bags kept going up and then they start going down and i was oh no they're gonna go back up oh no they're gonna go back up Oh, they're going to go back up. I had no exit strategy. I had no strategy of like, yo, when this dips, if this dips 20% in total, I'm out, you know, because thinking about it after the fact, I would say, man, if I would have sold at the top and then bought back in, you know, later on down the line when things started kind of leveling out and hitting the bottom. Um, so the advice for that would just be like, just stay grounded, you know, don't really get like too far ahead of yourself. Don't, you know, don't risk too much. Don't don't put yourself in in a in a bad situation uh, trying to invest. I mean, definitely take risk, but don't inv don't invest more than you can afford to lose. You know what I'm saying? Like, do, do, you, that was, do you think anybody can be a great investor by never taking a loss? No, okay. no. But I think I think what makes you I think losses are a part of it. You know, you're going to take a loss. But what makes you a, a great investor, and, and you can, you know, watch videos of uh, Warren Buffett and, and Cow what's the name, Michael Kawasaki and all them, you want to minimize your losses as much as possible, you know. So it's about not putting too much at risk, you know. So it's like if you were to buy into Bitcoin today, you say, oh, you know, Bitcoin is 11000 or whatever, you know, and, and it, it goes up to, 11,500 you you know put yourself a, a stop loss and say you know what at least i want to break even if it goes below 11,000 i will sell and try to get back in below you know but a lot of people are scared of hey it's going to hit 11,000 it's going to go to 12 it's going to go to 20 it's going to go to 100 and i'm going to miss it you know and that and that fear that fomo that fear of missing out will will literally cause you to just sit there and, and watch yourself lose money and just like waking up and seeing money in your in your compound passive income is like the best feeling ever waking up and seeing your money go down 
is <laughs> one of the worst feelings ever, you know. To me, it's unavoidable. Like, it's, I, 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 to me, it's unavoidable. You have to get bitten by that shark of, of greed. And most yeah. new investors do. Unless they were disciplined by their parents or something like that, most new investors are going to get bit by the shark of greed. And even experienced investors. Are, mm -hmm. and, and, it's still going to happen, yeah. And so what I also want to uh, what I also want to mention to people out there just getting in cryptocurrency is do not pay attention to other people's bags, okay? Don't be counting other people's pockets. Don't be watching other people's wallets. Don't be don't count other people's pockets. That's a big rule right there. Make it of no concern to you what other people are making or how much or how because no one ever wants to share the time they're losing money. No one's on crypto Twitter talking about how much money they lost, how, oh man, you know, all the trades they fucked up on. Uh, like, no one's talking about that shit. You wouldn't even click on the video. Like, you, you, yeah, exactly. you know, yeah, you know like, make that cost like, I would have been on a scam thumbnail, like, right? Like, no one's right. You're not going to click on it. I would love to make those videos because I think those videos are helpful. You know, people need to see what to do. Like, when you're, you know, for example, if you're trading, you know, and you lose money on a trade, a lot of people don't know when to give up on that trade. And I would make videos on that, but nobody wants to, to hear about the losses. You know, they only want to know about the gains, you know. So, uh, and that's what I, because it's, first of all, it's a distraction. You, and, and someone will always have more money than you. And that's just so, but no one's talking about the time. Like, here's the thing, though. No one's, no one's talking about the times they lost all their private keys and all the crypto in their wallet. No one's talking about all the trades they lost. No one's talking about all the gas fees they spent. No one's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so you don't know when people are coming up. You have no idea. And it's really none of your business. Even frustration, like the, some of the frustration people go through, like blockchain is new, man. It's not easy. Like, like, you know, I, I always compare it to when MySpace was coming out. And if you wanted to add something to your MySpace, you had to know a little bit of coding lightweight. You know, yeah. you had to go, you had to, put the code in there and you know nowadays it's like instant drag and drop type of you know post a picture you good you know and it's just it's not as easy for people to get in and 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 do everything correct right away you know it's it, so there's a learning curve so you might make some mistakes you go make some mistakes you know and another new thing for new investors i want to mention is you need to choose your actual res you need to choose why are you getting into cryptocurrency is it to get more US dollars or is it to get more cryptocurrency? Because yes. here's the thing, if you're, in my opinion, if you're just looking at it to get 20,000 in USD, 20, you're, you're thinking short term because this US dollar is being hyperinflated, right? So if you're only jumping into crypto just to get some more USD, that is a very short term strategy. I'm not saying you can't do that. You can do it. It's there for you. That's what exchanges are there. You can do it. But my personal goal is to get more Bitcoin, to get more Ethereum, to get more Doge. But yeah. you know, that's how I view it. Why am I using this US? How can I use this USD to get more Bitcoin? How can I use this Ethereum to get more, Ether you know, these DeFi's to get more Ethereum? Like, so I've, I'm, I've already chosen my monetary value. Yeah. Uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, right? So how can, mm -hmm. how can I use USD to get more of each of those versus other way around? And to me, that's more of a, a lot better long-term strategy than just like, how can I flip this Bitcoin and get some more USD? And that's the beautiful yeah. thing about Bitcoin is that you can do that. I'm not saying yeah. it's beautiful that you can use it to come uh, flip it for that's It's fine, but that is a small pool. That is a small strategy. And it's to me, it's very short term, you know? Yeah. So for me, it's like, you know, with, with that, it's like, you know, there's those, that's one main thing that's big for people, you know, like when you get out, you have to measure, are you trying to get more USD or you're trying to get more Bitcoin or you're trying to get more Ethereum, you know, you're trying to get more crypto. Um, on my channel, I talk about a lot how I like both, you know what I mean? Like me getting in, when I first got in, it was like, man, this is so great. There's so many good coins. I don't have enough money to invest in all of them, you know? So it was just like, I want to short term, um, you know, long term, I got a bag. You know what I mean? I got Ethereum. I got, I got a bunch of coins that I feel like long term, there's no denying them, you know, but then short term is like on the, the weekly or, or the monthly. There's also strategies that I use to 
you know, like I have a bag of Bitcoin that it's just there. You know, I'm never going to touch it five, 10 years, long-term strategy, whatever. I have another bag of Bitcoin that I'm using that to accumulate more Bitcoin. You know, I'm using that to do swing trades or, or monthly trades or stuff like that and to accumulate more Bitcoin. And then, you know, just so that it's like, I can stop using my fiat because I still, as of right now, I still need my fiat to pay rent, pay bills, buy food, stuff like that. But I don't like to have a crypto.com card and use my Bitcoin to buy food. Like, hell no. Nah. Like, I, I'd rather have zero in my bank account and have hella Bitcoin than, you know, I've, I've, yeah, I I've went back into, what I'm trying to say is I went back into fiat very little, <laughs> you know, like, you know. And, and it's the peace of mind because you know, you know, the majority of people have any little to nothing in crypto. So it's not that you're better than people. It's just, you understand more and deeper about economics value and, you know, currency. And you know that your future is a lot more set than the majority of people who stand in the bank around you. Right. You know? And so, and, and yeah, and it's, it's best you keep your ego. There's a lot of ego, you know, especially if you're on crypto Twitter, there's a lot of personality <laughs> and Roger. Baird. Sometimes you just gotta log off. Sometimes you just gotta log off crypto Twitter, man. Cause exactly. that, that'll be wrong state. It'll make you want to do something crazy and sell and all your coins. Let me mention Dude. one more thing. And I need, I, I I'm like, I like, I'm gonna turn this, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just turn it right now the dead end, right? The dead end. And this is what happens to me recently. It happens to everybody. If they uh -huh. just admit it, I'm not saying, but it's when so many coins are coming out, no matter how much money you save, you can save up a couple hundred, a couple thousand, even some cases, hundreds of thousands. It gets to a point where you keep, you invest in Wi-Fi. Oh shit. I invest in, uh, uh, D -A -D -T -H. Oh, there's a new coin. There's a new, I'm investing it. So yeah. we keep investing and we keep investing mm -hmm. and we keep investing until it hits the point where shit, uh, fuck, how can I get some more Ethereum in my wallet right now? Damn, my bank account's fucking. <laughs> yeah, uh, bro. Take check, don't I had that problem last week. There's, there were so many coins popping off oh my and God, I felt like so many more coins are going to pop off. And I'm like, I don't want to sell these coins, but I done ran down all the Ethereum fees was so high. I done ran down all the Ethereum in my wallet. I, yeah, yeah, I call it the I, dead end. It's not that you're broke, but it's kind of like you're broke right there because like all these coins are just taking off, right? They, they haven't really exploded. You're still racking up the, and it's like, damn, I got this, all this other money. I need to pay rent. I got to pay food. I got to pay my weed. Like, and you're like, damn. All right. Well, I got this other crypto. No, I should hold on to my. No, I should hold on. Nah, I'm gonna cash out a little bit. Nah, I'm gonna, you know. And it's just like that's another. And that's where I. I need to call a figure out the, the word for that. But sometimes, like what happened to me, where I actually had to quit. Like I actually had to just give this a break. Is that I tried to jump in the Ethereum and X Ample pool. I don't know if you heard of X Ample, but I tried to jump in the Ethereum X Anti Ample Anti Ample. Uh, liquidity and pool. Yeah, it's called anti. What's that? It's it's against. Uh, ample. It's like totally against ample. It's like fuck ample. Yeah, it's it's a meme coin. It's taking off right now. It's taking off, right? Oh what? Yeah, it's called anti ample. It's just like completely fuck ample. It's the opposite of ample, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I tried to get in that liquidity pool. I I I tried one transaction. Uh, failed. Lost about a dollar in gas. Tried another transaction, failed, lost about it. And I got so frustrated. I tried six times. I lost about uh, six, seven dollars in gas fees. And I'm realizing I'm spending way too much on gas. This, I'm like, I need to just chill the fuck out right now. I tried seven transactions. They all failed one after another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly. Too much. I'm going too far. I'm stretching it too far. I'm breaking all my investment rules. I'm on the drugs right now. Break it up, bro. I'm going to yeah. stop looking at CoinGecko. I'm going to get off crypto Twitter because this shit is addicted, man. Uniswap, you yeah. this casino. Yeah, and that's it literally like last week I was going, I was having the same problem. Like, uh, you know, DOS, like DOS is one of my, I like the low cap gem coins when I'm, okay. you know, for yeah, let's fun. Let's talk about those. Let's talk about those. Yeah, yeah, I like the low cap gem coins. They start popping off, but on uh, one of them, like, I was trying to stake, you know, and the stake pools, they usually start off at a pretty high ass ROI. 
I mean, yeah. I had a, a high APY, so I'm like, I got to get in now. I got to get in today. Yeah. This going to go in tomorrow. You know, and then it's like, I hit accept, and the fee is like $59, bro. Whoa. Like, what? And I hit accept without even thinking about it. And 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 <laughs> I'm like, I hope that don't go through. I hope that don't go through because I don't want to spend fifty nine dollars worth of yeah. Ethereum to and do some. So, but and that's how not to interrupt you. Uh, that's how you know we still are in the early days. You yeah. know, when we don't even know how much gas we're gonna spend, and we accidentally spend too. Like you know, like these problems will be figured out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like and. And these are just the stories we can tell, like, and laugh back. And you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, that $50, yep. some people spend it like uh, $200 in gas. Like I saw it like on crypto Twitter, like, yo, yeah. I, cause I teach mentees how to invest. And the dude was just about to invest like $15 a dot, but it cost $11 in gas. And I'm like, bro, I can't, I can't have you do that, bro. Yeah. I can't have you do, do that. that. And like, just yeah. hold off, you know? So, um, before we wrap it up, let's talk about your favorite, uh, your top five. I know there's, there's many, but give me your top five crypto gems. Why? Take as much time you need to explain about each of them. And um, yeah, I want, I'm interested in hearing your, your top five crypto DeFi. Top five, five. So for me, it's like, like we talked about at the beginning of this video, man, there's just, the crypto space is so broad and there's so much going on. So you know, like there's DeFi, there's all the different type of tokens and stuff like that. You got video game tokens, all that. But um, I'm going to just talk about the top five that I think is under the radar doing things. Um, so first, I always got to say ETH, uh, Ethereum, for sure, because like people just, people hate on ETH, but it's like, man, everything you love and everything you like is built on top of ETH. So we can't really hate on ETH and unless we see everybody really start switching over to different platforms. Like, you know, these, a lot of these projects ain't going to get going without their training wheels and ETH is the training wheels, you know, ETH is, you know, all these main nets is because everything started off on ETH. Um, and just like with the gas fees and everything that we do in DeFi, we need to buy ETH for that. So that's number one. Um, but that's the boring pick. Uh, I will say, Secondly, just right off the top that I could think of, like DAG, um, Constellation token. Um, it's, a, it's a centralized token, but when it comes to long-term uh, usability and use case and just looking at the partnerships and stuff like that, working with the United States government and, and the United States uh, defense and all that, Air Force, um, there's DAG. Um, Another one that I just talked about recently is um, EOS, which is an Oracle solution. Um, you know, the Oracles is going to be big. Like Chainlink is pretty, you know, Chainlink is popped off. That's another one of my favorite coins. But like I said, it's more on the boring side. Everybody's talking about Chainlink, you know. Um, but definitely DOS has hit its all-time high today, you know, barely today. So um, that one's cool. And then um, – let me see. I will say number two. Number two. I mean, uh, man, there's a lot. Oh, Seek. I'll say the Seek VR token. See, like right now, I think in the short term, next two to three years, you know, it's going to be a real, a real big change as far as like things opening back up, coronavirus dying down, especially here in the U.S. You know, I think – Seek token, being VR, and, and people don't really realize, but they're about to be used in schools. They're about to be used in public schools in Miami um, to actually give classes through virtual reality, which I think is a great idea, especially for right now. Um, so that one. And then um, as far as like DeFi tokens, I'll say Kyber Network and Kyber Network and probably Kyber and Compound. I'll put those two in the same same kind of situation as far as like in the long run just you know good investments you know like you said you explained compound perfectly like the the six ways you can make money just from having that damn coin so um i think some of those coins are just you know they're bound to pop off but there's plenty of other ones man there's there's so much out there as far as like 
I just look at as far as like what I'm trying to do. You know what I mean? Like I said, I have a long term bag and then I have a short term bag. And the low cap gyms and stuff like that is more the short term because, you know, you after going through the bear market last time, it's just you see how things don't really stick around. You know, you see how things go. The projects stick around. Um, Let me rephrase that. The projects stick around. The protocol stick around. The technology sticks around. But the buyers and the price does not always stay up. You know, so in order to minimize my risk, you know, I have to keep that in mind and at least make sure that I'm trying to break even um, on on everything, you know, and that's, you know, minimizing risk is one of those things that just, you know, I got to recommend that for everybody. Like, you know, if if you're making passive income with it, go ahead and use it. But once once the risk starts taking you into the negative, you got to start rethinking your strategy. Um but yeah, I would say that's that's the top five, man. But definitely out of the high caps, I would say ETH, man. ETH and, and Link is is some of my top holdings right there as far as um, the big boys go. Dope, dope, dope. That's what's up. So uh, what's your YouTube channel? Tell everybody your, uh, your name, your channel, uh, your email, where they can find you, hit you up. My channel is everything. Currency, go ahead and check that out. Maybe we could put a link in the description for y'all. Yeah. Um, I got a Telegram group, Everything Currency. Go ahead and join that. Um, I just started it, and I'm not really promoting it too much. I just want to get people who are really, really down and really, really involved. I don't just want a bunch of people in there, you know, kind of just talking shit to each other and stuff like that. I want people who's really into this investment thing, really into crypto, really excited about what's going on. So if you're into that, um, there, there's a uh, my telegram group everything currency um you can follow me on twitter as well everything currency um yeah dope dope well this was actually a pretty fun chat brother you you actually are pretty educated on this technology you've been around in this uh game for a while you've got a lot of wisdom so i'll definitely be watching your channel i'll be hitting you up and uh yeah it it was nice talking to you brother you were good man thanks for having me i appreciate it so Yeah, you guys, uh, hit me up for the Crypto Mentorship. Check out the links. Download the Brave browser. All right. Much love. Aloha. Peace.